Today we're here with the 2004 GMC Yukon and we're getting the ABS brake light um, comes on right here as well as the uh, red brake icon and also says service here it says service uh, brake system and if you get that and you're noticing also you have a mushy brake pedal you need to get that into the dealership or to repair quickly because that means that something's wrong with your brake system these lights though sometimes will come on and your brake still seems fine there's no change and that's probably due to a problem with maybe three three different things but most likely is the abs module which we're going to fix today it's pretty easy to do um, they say that on a scale of one to ten on difficulty for repair that removing this module is probably about a two and if you resolder uh, a loose connection inside it might be up around maybe a five or a six but not too hard to do doesn't take too many tools so we're going to get underneath the vehicle this is going to be for the yukon for the tahoe for the silverado they all have kind of the same system so we're on the driver's side and we're going to go underneath the car if you have it on a hill make sure you have it uh chalked and you probably don't have to raise up the car to do this because it's already up pretty high so we're going to get underneath and one thing you could try before going for the abs module is to remove these two bolts yours might just have even just one but these are ground connections for the abs system you can just loosen these up and then clean up um, any rust or corrosion or dirt that you see and then put them back on that may do the trick that may just solve it right there there's also speed sensors in all four of the wheels um, that can cause that problem of an intermittent light going on and off but it's unlikely it's the speed sensor it can also be the wires that go between the speed sensor and the module usually though it's actually the module itself which is Remember, we're on the driver's side. We're kind of near the front wheel, or I should say the driver's door, about right here. And we're coming in now toward the center of the car. We're probably about uh, two foot and a half, two feet in. And then I'll turn on my little light here. But uh, here we have a ABS pump and on the top we have an ABS module and it's just a modular thing. It's easy to take off. It doesn't, you don't have to do anything with the brake lines. Um, you just have to remove a few electrical connections. And, uh, Torx 20 uh, screws or bolts that are holding it on and then it comes off and you can either um, put on a new one or you can put on a rebuilt one cost about $150 or you could even resolder the connection and it may do the trick we're going to try that today we're going to get off these electrical connectors this one right here there's a red tab and you want to just pull that down you might want to use a flathead screwdriver so we are going to get this thing to come down first kind of pry it loose It goes down pretty far. That I'm having a little trouble getting this one off. So I brought the red tab down, but then I use a pair of channel locks to grab under the plastic here. And that gave me that gave me the leverage I needed to get this thing to come down and release. So it's a pretty big modular plug. Again, you could try spraying some contact cleaner in on the contacts on both sides it could that could be enough to fix our problem now we're going to remove two, uh, four torx screws one there one there and then on the other side you can't see it but there's same thing there's one there and one there four and we're going to get that off so we're going to use a little ratchet to do that so i've got a little torx 20 bit and put that onto that screw so you can get two hands up there so not, not a ton of room wrench it over there Okay. 
and you can reach in with your other hand to on the other side if you want to have a little bit more torque so it's not on there super tight pushing down with my left hand and I'm just turning it with my right it's so loose now that the ratchet doesn't even really need to be used I can just use my fingers to spin that one off Bring that out now with my fingers. Not in there that tight, you just need a ratchet to do maybe a three or four turns to start you off. And again, you probably don't need to jack up your car to get in here and do this. Um, you can, it might just make it a little bit easier to move your, your elbows around when you're doing this stuff. Screws almost out. There's four of these little buggers. Okay, there's one kind of a long shaft. So again, these are Torx 20. We're gonna get out that next easy one close by right here. Let me see if I can bring the ratchet around from the other side. It might be easier, maybe. Let's see. So my right hand is coming up over, left hand's pushing down on the ratchet. So just got to get it a few turns with the ratchet, and then you probably do the rest just with your fingers. Yeah. There we go. And yeah, it's pretty common for when you get the intermittent light that uh, one of the solder connections in this ABS brake module is just loose. It could be even be more than one. It's just because uh, this thing is connected without much dampening. So this 20 year old vehicle, after, after all that time, this, this problem probably started to happen to us at about year 18. And we're just dealing with it now. It's been a couple of years. And probably just resoldering it'll do it. If not, I'll send it out. There's a place on eBay that can can do their um, do the procedure for you. I'll give it a shot though. The only difference between whether you would do it or not is uh, how you feel with your soldering ability. Because the experts, you know, they're doing it all day long so they're really good at it and they usually have a, a pretty good type of a microscope where they can really see uh, where the brake might be there's there's probably eight different spots that you could re-solder there's a second screw to really solve the problem there's a lot of little joints but... so I'm I did that one that one is one in this corner. I don't know if you guys can see this angle with the camera, but here's our little guy. I'm gonna reach up there with my right hand and then from the outside. Watch it on that little bugger. And we're just gonna loosen it. loose and now just use my fingers to do the next part of it we get this thing out you just have to uh, take off the, the top it has a sealed top that'll expose the circuit board and then we can resolder um, the eight joints we're just gonna use some flux on them first We'll get them hot with our soldering iron and then add a little extra solder. And then that's screw number three. And then we'll uh, clean up the flux and put it all back together. Reseal, reseal the top. Okay, so we got out three. There's another one. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it on camera. I'm going to kind of do it by feel. But so you can see where my finger is. I'm going to go back now about three inches. 
this little guy and see if I can do this by feel. So we finally got the ratchet onto that hard fourth screw. I'm going to just loosen it up now. Just was hard to uh, find that because you can't see really at all. It's all just using your two fingers to guide the Torx 20 bit onto that head of the screw. And then once you find it, it's no problem. You can get it off pretty easy. It's just hard, a little bit hard to find. <laughs> so this is the last one. And then when we get this one off, we should just be able to lift the uh, module off. So I'm going to take the ratchet off there and then just do the rest by hand. I did use on this fourth one a longer bit because I just couldn't really feel well with the shorter one I used on the other three. So I think using a longer one could help. I'll show you guys here in a sec. Yeah, okay, so we just got the fourth screw out. These are my two hands. I use this longer bit. There's the fourth screw. So now we should be able to lift off the module. There's one more electrical connector we gotta get off. So I'm gonna kind of push up, wiggle, get this thing off. In there 20 years so you gotta wiggle and go straight up get off these solenoids okay now i'm gonna pull it toward me here's my last connector to get off and just gotta pull back this guy I'll use my flathead screwdriver. Pull that tab down a little bit and then I can push this thing back off. Putting this whole thing back on will be easy too. Just do, do everything in reverse. Put on this connector first and put it back over its, put the module back over its position and then put the screws back. So there's our module. We're going to go work on this and see if we can fix that circuit board. You can kind of see the circuit board here in the background. Let's go and work on that. So there's different companies that make these ABS modules for the car. And depending on who made it, sometimes they have eight millimeter uh, screw here, here. I think there's one there and one there that you have to get out to be able to get off this top piece. The top piece comes off and you get to the circuit board. And this one doesn't have those screws, but all of them, you have to use a razor knife be careful you have to describe and to cut the gasket material to make it let go and it might take a little while to do that and be careful you don't cut your your hand and you want to be aware that there is a circuit board about right there so you don't want to go in deep you just want to go in probably about a quarter of an inch would be great and just cut away a little bit then do a little bit more just doing it about an inch at a time and eventually you will have cut the sealant loose and you can take off the top so I'll show you that at the end but you're just gonna go around this whole perimeter and cut that gasket material and then you can take the top off the top has a little bit of adhesive material here, 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 here. It acts like a heat sink so that the unit doesn't get too hot. And that material has to be broken. You do that by gently prying to get that top off. I'll show you that when we get to that point. So cut around there pretty good. I got a screwdriver in there and now I'm just gonna Start to gently pry up on the top. And what you can do is grab two screwdrivers, maybe a little bit bigger one. So pry up on your medium sized one, get a bigger one in there, and then use that sideways torque to help you pry up. It'll, it'll let go. What that can do too is if you get that pried up be a better angle for cutting loose any more um, 
gasket material that might still be holding on. That should help out. The gasket stuff's a little bit like glue. There we go. Come over to another part of it and do that. So we got a lot of this section's loose. I'm gonna try to pry in down here. Bigger screwdriver in there. There we go. Got a sideways torque. This is about five minutes later. I think I can do the rest by hand now, so I'm just gonna. gasket material. There's the circuit board and you can see there was a little bit of a adhesion too right there, right there, right there, right there, right there under the circuit board and again that's called a heat sink. It helps the heat of the module transfer to this metal coating to help help the module cool down. Oh so you can see there's a lot of connections right all over the place. Don't worry about these little guys but the ones we're gonna reheat are the bigger ones. You can see like that one these guys is where you might have a crack. Any of these bigger ones. So it just takes us a little bit of time. These guys. So we'll go ahead and re-solder those. We might check these ones too. But any of these little tiny ones, don't worry about it. So we want to do the soldering now. So we're going to put a little flux on these um, bigger solder joints. So any of the big ones you see, put a flux on there and the flux just helps the solder to get on there. A little better. So any of the big ones. And we'll just heat those up. Add a little um, solder, and that should correct any micro cracks that might be there. Oh, I'm sorry, we got the flex on there. Okay, and we have our soldering iron and a little bit of solder. Turn on this fan. one. I'll do that all the way around. We're going to use some of this uh, electronic cleaner now on the board after we did the soldering and we did the flux. Spray some of this on. So here I'm just using 
uh, alcohol pads. You want to use like 99% alcohol would be ideal to wipe down uh, all the connections that I worked on. I just want to make sure there's no more flux left on the circuit board and everything's really clean. The 99% alcohol is really good because it has very little water. You don't want to have any water on the board and it evaporates um, any kind of debris or any kind of contamination and will make sure that you have really good connections and there's nothing on there that could cause a small short circuit. So it's good to wipe down pretty much the whole board and I just use a few of the um, alcohol wipes to do that. It shouldn't take you too long. You have some gasket material spread around the perimeter of the top. Put the top back on. I'm going to clamp it. Remember on some models you have to also put some screws back in here. Some 8 millimeter screws. But on this model it just is held on by the sealant. So we'll go ahead and put on a couple of clamps here. Nice and tight. One there. One here. We'll let it sit for a couple hours. It's mainly just keep the moisture from sneaking in there and give it a protect, protective coating on the top. Right, let's put a clamp on there. Okay, we're going to put the repaired module back in. We're going to put the electrical connector here first. This guy. I want it. Push it in. As we go, clicked. That's nice. Okay, I'm going to put the module now into position. I'm going to lift it over these pins. Drop it down on the on those six pins. That in position. I put the screws back now. One's gonna go here in the corner. Those are just hand tight. And do the ones in the corner. Got one right here. And in there. I'm gonna use my fingers to spin it on first. I'm gonna come in with my right hand over the frame. Tighten up my hand. This, this part's a little bit blind. You just kind of doing it by feel. You can see a little bit. And this may do the trick. This may get rid of the intermittent because we resoldered everything. If it doesn't, no big deal. I'll just pull this thing and send it to the uh, place. It's I think it's. Maybe 80 bucks on eBay. I'll send you guys, put a link in the description below. Or you could buy a brand new one, but they're kind of pricey. I think it's a, it's 300 something to buy a brand new one. Now I'm gonna do the one in this other corner. You gotta kind of do that by feel because you can't really see it. So I'm gonna guide it in. Yeah, it went in, that's good. Feel it went in. Remember, if you do have that warning light coming on and you feel some mushiness in your brakes, it is warning you there's something wrong with your brake system. It's probably a leak, a leaking brake fluid. So you do want to get that fixed. It would go to the dealership or to an independent garage who can who can work on your vehicle, and uh, that's nothing to mess with. But if you feel your brakes are normal, you don't feel any change. And that warning light has come on and it's intermittent. Probably this little ABS module. Tightening the one in that corner. Got it. Okay, now I'm going to go to this other corner. Tighten this one. If I had a better ratchet a set up here, it'd be, be better off. This one's a little too long for what we're trying to do because there's not much room. But it works. I'm going to get this one the same tension. Not crazy tight, but snug. 
And then I'll do the other two corners. So I'm going like kind of like an X. Okay, that one's snug. Go to the other corner. Go to this close by one here. Okay, that one's tight. Now I'm gonna go to the other corner. All right, tight. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and put on these last modular plugs. Put on this big one first. It has all the pins on it. Line this up underneath. Push that out. As far as it'll go. And we're gonna push this red plug up here to lock it. Push this one in. And as far as it'll go, push this one closed on it. All right, so all our connections are good. We got our tight. Let's see if it does any difference now. I want to see if the ABS light has gone out. Let's start up. <clears throat> yeah, so the, might have done the trick. Um, used to say service uh, brake system and it had the ABS warning light. So maybe it just needed the thing to be soldered. We'll um, drive it around and see if, when it goes over a bump, see if um, the intermittent problem comes back or not. Watching our video and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance. And also click the little bell notification button so we can send you uh, weekly videos on all the different ways of fixing appliances around your home and saving you lots of money. So thanks again for watching and please also press the like button for our video if this was helpful to you. To contact me at the email listed below which has got the fixit guy at yahoo.com with any of your questions.